Hey, good evening to you, team members, and welcome to Lexus and Company. First of all, I would like to thank all the team members for being a part of this session. And uh, from the core of my heart, uh, I would like to thank all the friendship uh, candidate who have been there associated with uh, Lexus and Company from so many times, so much time, and uh, have given all the their support and their dedication and their in being a part of this LSC family. And I would like to cue all the audience as well for watching this video. So before I go ahead and start this uh, session, I would like to tell you that uh, my today's session is about check bounds. All right. Uh, in legal term, we also call it as negotiable instrument act 138. All right. So guys, check bounds is a common problem in end days and uh, most of the people face this problem and whenever they is ex money or uh, whenever they is exchange of transaction between and if there is a default whenever a payment is done by check so then the concept of check bounce comes so before I go ahead and uh, start my topic previously in my session, I had taught you about legal notice, about, about criminal complaint. So this is about a legal notice. It's to be in case of a check bounce. All right. So before we start the session, I will request all the team members to quickly go ahead and uh, attend. And all the audience who are watching this video, I'll be very happy if you go ahead and type your city where you are located. How many audience are there who are actually taking benefit of this? Check bonds is a very important issue nowadays. Since the lockdown and during the lockdown, the bus was literally the first and most important thing which suffered and most of the businessmen whether it is a small business business had to go with a very strong financial crisis which actually created problem in the business world all the businesses while doing the transaction kind of guarantee that if i go ahead and give you the goods on credit what is the guarantee that i'll get the payment and due to this other businessmen had no other option because they never want to give the payment in cash and uh, uh, the only option they had left giving a check post data check maybe a current date check with a promise that the payment will be cleared in some ways however the major setback which came here after the lockdown when the company started presenting in the bank, since it was already suffering, there was no money in the bank account of the company. And finally, the check got dishonored. We can understand on a humanitarian ground that if there is no money, from where will they pay? But the question is, what about the seller? What is his security? How does he recover the payment? because he has already rendered the services or maybe he has already done the payment. So under these circumstances, what a legal remedy does the seller have in this case to recover his payment? So in this case, the legal provision which is there in the eye of law, that is file a criminal complaint in the court of law and district court. <clears throat> Not every district court. As per the recent amendment in 138 rules, criminal complaint has to be filed in the court where the home branch of the account holder is located. Suppose I am in Mumbai, I presented the check in Delhi, but the home of my bank account is in Kolkata. So I can can only file in Kolkata, not in Delhi, not in Mumbai, not in anywhere else. Previously, there was a provision 
that if I Delhi, though my home branch is in Kolkata, I can buy the case in Delhi. But unfortunately, there has been some changes in the weight rules, and now the check can only, uh, I mean, the case can only be filed in the court where the home branch is located. So <clears throat> suppose my home branch is in Delhi, so I'll file a case in Delhi. All right. So we'll go ahead more in detail. We'll discuss about the topic. Since this is a common problem which most of the people are facing, so I thought of why not making a detailed video on this for my audience, team members, for my students. So to Miller, I don't want to make the session too lengthy so that you get bored. So I did the topic into two parts. In the first video today, I will go ahead and explain you in theory what is one third bonds, what is the requirement filing the case, when can we file the check bonds, what are the required these things. And in my second session, I'm going to talk about how to draft a legal notice if you want to file a case. Because before filing the case, we have to go ahead and first send a legal notice the party from whom we need to go ahead and cover the payment. This, this legal notice is also called as 138 notice, demand notice for 138 or 138 NI Act. NI Act means Negotiable Instrument Act. All right, regulates the check bounce case. The entire case runs on this. All right, so we'll be having two sessions on this. Since you are watching this session, I request you to watch this session. All right. And the second session will be on draft, how to draft a legal notice. And I'll third session also on this. That in case if you still your payment after sending the legal notice, then you have only remedy left. That is to file a case, a criminal complaint in the court, district court under section 138 NIA Act. So my third session will be draft a criminal complaint for filing a case in the court. So I will call my audience, all my students, all my team members to watch the session for your benefit to understand the entire of 138 NIA Act. All right. So clearly without wasting the time, let us start. So first Thing which I'm going to talk about is 138 case. What I mean, what are the reasons why check bounces? All right, what actually gives rise to a NI Act case or the cause of action of the 130 check bounce case? Right, so guys, the first cause of action which actually arises majorly is insufficient fund if there is no fund in the account and the check is already issued and the check is presented and when the check is presented bank there is no fund in the account so first is insufficient the second one is mismanagement so suppose if the person intentionally or negligently or by mistake did a wrong signature account holder. So because of that also the check may bounce. Then post dated check. Dated, say for example, first of and you presented the check on first of August. So the actual date has not reached so bounce because of that also. All right. Next is stale check. Stale check means if the check is damaged by any way, wet, soiled, there is a uh, cut mark or torn check, or uh, the since uh, as per the new rule that and the barcode or the check is not readable by the machine. So these are called a stale check. So because of this also the 
check bounds. Next reason is if there is a stop pay check. Suppose I presented the check with the wrong intention and, and the other person who has given the check, he thinks there is sufficient ground to justify that I do I am not entitled for this payment. So he puts a stop payment on the check or maybe intentionally all with malified intention. So if there is a stop payment instruction on the check, because of that also, the, then there is a difference in the amount of word and number. Suppose the column where the amount has to be written in number, there I mentioned 1 lakh. The mistake by writing in number instead of 11 lakh, I mentioned 1000 or maybe in word I have written 11 lakh, but I have given extra 0, 1 less 0. So there is a mismatch in amount at both sides because of this also the check might get damaged, I mean bounced. If there is any kind of uh, correction name which there is a cross crest and corrected sometimes the check might also get because of this or dishonored because of this or if there is a damaged disfigured check suppose it was written 11 and there is a pattern in which it is written name they, it is clearly visible that the handwriting in the entire content of the check two different handwriting so it is clearly visible that the content of the check has been tampered. So it shows some malified intention. And if the bank suspects this, then in that case, also the check may be dis dishonored. All right. So these are some of the causes or reasons of check bounce. Now, what to do with the check bounces? The is that once you get memo, I mean, whenever the check bounces, and when I present the check in my bank, the bank sends back the check to me along with a returning memo. The returning memo is like a slip. The slip may be handwritten or it may be computer generated. So as soon as we return memo, there is a date written on the return memo. We have to send a legal notice to the opposite from whom we have uh, to receive the payment so now, now the rule says that the legal notice has to be sent within 30 days from the return memo all right and in that we give 15 days time to the make the payment now if the party do not make the payment then in that case we can of that 15 days grace period which we have given to the party. After that, <coughs> we have 30 days time to file in the court. Before the 30 days, we have to file the case in the court. Validation period expires. So now, guys, my first question to team members of all the student before I pray is can we directly file a case of 138 in the court? Is legal notice for one as demand notice? My next question question to my audience is what are the reasons of check bounds under what circumstances the check may get dishonored I request all the audience right now in live session or whenever they are watching the video I request all of you to write your answer in the comment box all right what are the reasons jurisdiction can I file a case in the court if is it decided based on 
where I have uh, presented the check or where the account of the person uh, is based who has given me the check where me the actual holder of the check where my, my home branch resides all right i have already explained this before so from the beginning i'll request the answer in case if you have not watched i'll request you to watch the video once again from the beginning and type your answer in the comment box my, my third, third question till now is after the check in how many days we have to send the legal notice and after the sending the legal notice how many days of grief give to the opposite party to pay us the money and in case if we don't don't receive the payment within grace period within how many days we have to file the case in the court these are few of the questions my dear team members till now now i proceed further with the uh, topic that in legal notice we have presented the check returning memo 15 days of time period has we have prepared the petition also now we are ready to file the case in court in order to file the case we draft a petition uh, we call it in legal language a criminal complaint under section 138 ni act so we can just just file the complaint any other documents which is required to be submitted along with that right so guys first thing which is required is the copy of the complaint the copy of the complaint which we have prepared in the court all right the second thing which is required is the original copy of of the check returned by the bank which includes the of the bank when the check was presented with the bank of the opposite party so which is required is the copy of the returning memo all right the fourth thing which is required is the of the the legal notice which we have sent to the party within 30 days from the date of returning memo we have given him a time time period of 15 days as a grace the fifth thing which is required to did is copy of the post or the tracking report him the notice by post as a proof has been this includes the postal receipt and the tracking report of right under search of some circle how you without the tracking report however question of the court 99% cases will ask you for the tracking report so you should it's better to attach the track all right right and the last thing which is again not mandatory the above of things are mandatory is the copy of this instances of the transaction between the parties if it was a friendly loan in cash then normally no instances are there however in some cases if it is a loan 
how many people sign agreements in case if it is a business transaction then in that case people have invoices proof of delivery will have copy of performa invoiced by the other party the proof of pay and the proof of receiving these things can be given as additional evidence by the party all right <clears throat> as a proof that yes there was a genuine trust however this is not mandatory this can be given later on or this can be during the trial then you can all suppose if there is a witness to it if there is suppose any cctv recording any call recording any cctv footage is when witness is there, there who was a witness to this entire transaction suppose if any paper evidence or any any receipt is not there suppose if it is a company or if it is a bank where daily 1000 transactions like this and daily 500 checks on this so normally for big companies it is not possible do the is in the name of but it is not possible for the director to go ahead and uh, present himself in the 500 cases on a daily basis so normally what does big company do there is a person as authorized representative to appear in the court on behalf of them <coughs> by giving a power of attorney these are also called as authorized representative so whenever there is an authorized representative who is acting the person in that case the copy of the power of attorney or the authority letter is also required needs to be filed along with the case so guys, these are which are actually required and yes the person can also go ahead and file the case in the court himself or herself however it is not not mandatory that you need to file along you you can file a case yourself also however since check bounce case is not an easy case since the both the parties settle the dispute on first on so or second here but sometime especially in the case of high value transaction or if the case has been filed with Fraudulent intention, or in case party wants to escape, then the case might go for a long run trial. And so many things, this evidence cross, so many things. So for this, for For layman, it is not possible to do everything here in the court, and the court also want policy and procedure and always better to hire a professional lawyer. As well, we can be client to present the even uh, filing a check bonds. They are more that. to file a case like this all the law students who need help if you 
are facing similar kind of problem. Anybody in your family and friends or advocate who is watching this, you can always help your client by women, him or her. The case you can also help him her in sending the legal notice. And that what is our duty as an advocate or as a legal consultant? All right, it is always advisable to hire a professional to get this work done because check bonds case is actually not an easy case nowadays. Hundred cases are there if filed, ninety cases are being contested. So a skilled professional is required and we as a skilled professional can definitely help our client in filing this case. So I'll end this video till then. only my dear team members, my, my next thing regarding how to draft a If we want to uh, in the court, in case if we send a notice to the party, how to draft the legal notice. And my next video will be about how to draft a criminal complaint. I will request all my audience to go ahead and watch the next two videos of, so that you get the complete knowledge about this kind of case so that you as a law student or you legal advisor help anybody in your family or for your client you can give complete knowledge to your client and or anybody any audience who have faced this kind of problem you can go and if you have knowledge about you can definitely help your friends in your personal case also you can follow the preliminary procedure and you can be careful so that you don't fall into this kind of problem so guys my final question for the audience for today is in case if we want to go ahead a case in the code for 138 or check bounds what are the documents which are required? I'll request all the audience to go ahead and type in the answer in the comment box. And, and uh, so that in case if you have any doubt,